Hey gamers, Milko6925 here, bringing you the first in a brand new series. And this series is all going to be about war recaps. What we're going to do is, every time the Blood Crows go to war, I am going to have a look and see how we do. And I'm going to show you what went down. So, today I'm bringing you not the last war the Blood Crows took, but the war before. So, let's have a look at our warlock. Now, as you can see here... The clan has been going through a very serious transition over the past couple of weeks. So I'm just showing you our war log to date. Now obviously there's quite a few missing from prior to this. But as you can see we went through quite a few successful stages. But in not so recent months we have hit a brick wall. Now there is a reason for that. And the reason is we've been going through quite a transition. We've been allowing a lot of new players in and we've been letting a lot of old players go. So we've been trying to find a nice balance. Trying to get the right level so everyone knows where we're at. So today I'm going to show you is the Blood Crows versus Brutus Buckeye. This was a war from a couple of days ago where we lost by two stars. Now this was a fantastic war. It was thoroughly enjoyable. Both sides went toe-to-toe -to -toe and give it everything that they had. But unfortunately, the Blood Crows were just defeated by a clan that was slightly better than us. Stoney, the leader, did some very good attacks, managing to three-star my base on his first attack. And managed to take one star from our number one, Kieran. Stoney actually signed up to my YouTube channel after noticing in the clan description that we have a YouTube channel. He came on to wish us good luck in the war um, and basically say good luck and see you around. Excellent videos. Thank you very much for that, Stoney. I really do appreciate it. Well done on the war. It was a fantastic war. Unfortunately, he just pipped us at the post. It's what we both thought would happen. But unfortunately for us, Brutus Buckeye just managed it. But it was a war we loved. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, near enough all of our main clan members did use both attacks. And poor, unfortunately for Kieran, who, even though he's our number one player, and is a CO for us, even though he was an elder at the time, unfortunately was unable to use his second attack due to real life. Now, Kieran holds a very important job, so unfortunately, sometimes he's not always able to get online for a day at a time. Now, because of that, sometimes he has missed the odd attack. But, seeing as though how important his real life is, we appreciate that, we understand that. And that's what the Blood Crows are all about. If someone can't attack for whatever reason, as long as if they let us know why they can't attack in a war, we're understanding. But generally speaking, is the rules are, if you don't attack and use both attacks, you will be demoted. If you're a member, you'll be booted. If you're an elder, you'll be demoted down to a member. If you're a co-leader, you'll be demoted to an elder. And even the leader can be demoted to co-leader if he fails to attack. That's why I always attack. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So, let's just have a couple of look at the war stats. Now, unfortunately, the last attack was by me. I was only able to get two stars on their number two. So, let's have a look down here and see how it went. As you can see, it was a fantastic start by Brutus Buckeye. They really went to town on us. Soj King was our first attacker. As always, in nearly every single war, Soj King is an elder that's been with us for several months. Don't worry, Soj King, you're not going to be elder for much longer, pal. You'll be a CO in no time, so don't worry about that. As you can see, the second attack by us was me taking on their number three for three stars before the rest of the clan started pitching in as well. As you can see, we went through a very strong phase here, doing a bit of cleanup, but unfortunately, it wasn't quite good enough. So, the war stats ended 43 to 41, with Soj King being our most heroic attack, with Tribal B Dog being theirs. So, let's have a look at Soj King's attack. Now, Town Hall 7 versus Town Hall 7, so I bet you can all appreciate what's going to go down here. Three lightnings on that left air defence to take it out. Now, this is where Soj King does go slightly wrong. Oh, no, I'm mistaken. He doesn't. He does exactly what he should. Drop those dragons in from the same side to get to that air defence as soon as possible. Do apologise, Soj King. What it was, we did have a few people taking on Town Hall 7s this war that after they took off the first air defence on one side, attacked from the same side that they took down the air defence, 
instead of attacking from the opposite side near the second air defence, meaning that air defence had more chance to take down more troops. And because of that, we did actually lose a few stars early on because of it. But we picked up them stars, stars in the clean-up phase. So, most rogue attack by Soch King on Walnut. A very solid Town Hall 7 versus Town Hall 7 attack. So let's have a look at the war map. And let's see. Unfortunately, I said Brutus Buckeye got all stars barring two on Kieran. We unfortunately dropped quite a few. Our highest three star was on Pittman there, number three by me. So let's just have a quick gander at this replay. Now, as you can see here, it's a very similar army to what I always use. I dropped in them two loons to take out or try and take the Arch Tower and lure out that clan castle. As soon as that clan castle goes down, I like to lure it over to the corner with those archers. Then all I do, drop down the king to distract the dragon, drop down the archers. As soon as that dragon goes down, dum dum dum, there we go. Then I can commence the main bulk of my attack. From the north side, in go them four lava hounds, followed up by them loons to target individual defences. This is a very common strategy that I use, and it's quite a common strategy overall. But it's a strategy I'm very comfortable with, and I thoroughly enjoy. Oh, bit of signal lost there, there we go. Now, unfortunately, one of them hounds didn't pop, but it's not going to be an issue. All the defences down, and all we're doing now is playing happy cleanup. Easy three stars. Now you'll see that I'm not the only one that uses these attacks, but I'm probably the highest level member to use this attack. Once again, that was an easy Town Hall 8. Normally I would be going against Town Hall 9, probably mid to low with similar strategies. Now let's have a look at Kieran's attack. Two stars on their number two. Kieran likes to use a good combination of troops. He is a very experienced member of the clan. Been a CEO for several months now. Well, I say, as you can see, he was only an elder at this point because of him being unable to attack in previous war. But, as I said, Kieran been re-promoted to CEO, showing his stature with the clan. Let's see how this clan takes part. Obviously, he's trying to funnel all them troops into the centre. Take down that dragon. Boom, boom. And in come rest of those troops. Trying to funnel in to the centre. So as to take out that clan castle. Nicely placed free spell. Down it goes. And there it goes for the two stars. Unfortunately Kieran wasn't able to get three stars. But even if he had, that still put, would have put us one star behind for the win. So overall, a good result. So let's just have a look down here at how rest of the clan did. And look at all those three stars. Oof. So many. So close. But obviously we've got the opponents who absolutely deserve their win today. Taking all our stars by two. So let's have a look at Stoney's attack on my base. Well done, Stoney. Now, as you can see, I use this uh, I've been using this base for quite a while. I think people are starting to get used to the design, so I think it's time I did slightly change it because this base now has been three-starred for the past two wars. Something this base hadn't been is three-starred up until the past two weeks. Until then, this base just kept repelling everyone. Probably more through luck than anything else, but there we go. <laughs> so in go all the troops, boom, boom, boom. Luckily, that big bomb was able to take out them hog riders. Thankfully, I don't like them hog riders. So that's why them big bombs are just sat there waiting for them. But unfortunately, it's not going to make much of a difference because in go all the troops and they just absolutely decimate my base in two and a half minutes, giving them 30 seconds to spare. Well done, Stoney. Right, that's it from me, guys. Well done to Brutus Buckeye on a fantastic win, 43 to 41. I like to think that the Blood Crows gave a good account of themselves, even though we did come off the losers in this war, which did take our losing streak up into nearly double figures. Not quite there. And luckily, we managed to avoid that in the next war. Woohoo! Which we will show you 
next time we are here. So guys, that's it from me. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the new series. If you like what you see, please comment below and let me know. Please subscribe and share the channel. And I will see you guys next time. Take care.